The money that banks create is the electronic money that flashes up on the screen when you check your balance at an ATM. Find out how it's created every time a bank makes a loan, the way that money is taught in universities is often very inaccurate. These papers and sources from central bankers and other experts show how the system really works, the laws that make it illegal for you to print your own £5 or £10 notes have been in place since 1844. But these laws have never been updated to account for the fact that 97% of money is now digital, from the time when the Bank of England was formed in 1694, it took over 300 years for banks to create the first trillion pounds. It took them only 8 years to create the second trillion, money as a social invention, indeed among the most important of all social inventions. At present the right to create money has been handed over to the private businesses we call banks. But this is not the only way we could create money and, as recent experience suggests, it may be far from the best one, currency seems like a very simple idea. It's only money, after all, and that's just what we use to buy the things we want and need. We get paid by our employers, and we use that money to pay the bills, buy our food, and purchase goods and services. We might put some in a savings account at the bank or invest it in stocks or real estate, but for the most part, currency seems like a fairly straightforward concept. In fact, the development of currency has shaped human civilization. Currency has stopped wars, and it has started many more. Cities and nations as we know them would not exist without it. It is difficult to overstate the importance of currency in modern life, we invented money and we use it, yet we cannot understand its laws or control its actions. It has a life of its own, we'll look at the history of currency, from the earliest coins all the way to internet banking. We'll also discuss the development of currency in the United States, as well as the economics involved in setting exchange rates and controlling inflation. Money, we'll use the terms interchangeably for the purposes of this discussion, can be defined as a unit of purchasing power. It is a medium of exchange, a substitute for goods or services. It doesn't have to be the coins or bills with which you're probably most familiar. In fact, through the ages, everything from large stone wheels, knives, slabs of salt, and even human beings have been used as money. Anything that people agree represents value as currency. For example, if you have one barrel of wheat, and you want a cow, without currency you have to find someone who not only has a cow, but also wants a barrel of wheat and will agree to the trade, let's say your neighbor fits the bill, he has a cow and wants a barrel of wheat. What if a barrel of wheat isn't worth an entire cow? Your neighbor can't exactly make change by giving you part of a cow. Now, if you live in a place where round, stamped coins are widely considered to have a certain value and can be exchanged for other things, then you just have to find someone who needs wheat. That person will take the wheat in exchange for an agreed-upon amount of coins, which you can later use to buy a cow from someone else, this is not to mention the fact that carrying a handful of coins is much easier than lugging around a barrel of grain or a cow with you whenever you need to make a trade. 